Now, the White House has confirmed reports of the CIA chief's emergency visit to Kiev. The surprise admission comes amid suspicions that his meeting with interim leaders paved the way to a military crackdown on protesters in eastern Ukraine. The State Department is also reportedly sending a group of FBI experts to Kiev. Artis Ghani Chechikan takes a look at how Western governments have been throwing their weight behind the Maidan protesters while blasting activists in the east at the same time. Washington praises Kiev as it treats protesters in East Ukraine as terrorists. Uh, we commend the Ukrainian government in the manner that it has dealt with a, a very challenging situation. A stark contrast from Washington's rhetoric just a short while ago. We expect uh, the Ukrainian government uh, to show restraint, uh, to not resort to violence in dealing with uh, peaceful protesters. U.S. officials described the Maidan activists as peaceful even when they seized government buildings and attacked police. Now they refer to protesters in eastern Ukraine as gunmen controlled by Moscow. It should make uh, everyone realize and understand much more about the language of diplomacy, the hypocrisy that uh, we endure because we're seeing it here in a very compressed period. In a span of less than two months, Washington has gone from cheering on Maidan protesters as they seized government buildings in Kiev to openly supporting Kiev's push to quell the anti-government action in the east of the country. The CIA director traveled to Kiev for consultations with Ukrainian authorities, and Vice President Joe Biden will go there in less than a week. And there has even been talk of sending weapons to Ukraine. The people of Ukraine should know, why won't we give them some defensive weapons with respect to arming and providing assistance to the Ukrainians, the fact is that we are currently working with Ukraine to determine their requirements across the entire security sector. Many European officials have joined Washington in their 180-degree shift of position, some, like Lithuania and Sweden, who were horrified at the prospect of Viktor Yanukovych using force at Maidan, now explicitly back Kiev's right just to do that in the east of the country. Sweden's Carl Bildt wrote, if illegal armed groups took over police stations and local government offices in Sweden, we would use all our instruments to restore order. Yet, back in February, Carl Bildt condemned the same argument Yanukovych's government made. It's not clear whether Washington and its allies in Europe are making any significant efforts in advising Kiev to take into consideration the will of those in the eastern part of Ukraine, those who want greater autonomy, those who are very unhappy about what happened in Kiev, and who feel their voices are being dismissed just because they're pro-Russian. In Washington, I'm Ganesh Chekyan, our team.